Hey y'all, what's up? How are y'all doing today? So today, I am on my way to take my dog to the vet for her monthly sh uh, shot. It really helps her feel so much better. So that is what I'm doing today. And, uh, I was watching a video this morning. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of his channel, but I will, probably after I upload this video, I will go copy and pay, copy it, and then I'll put it in the comments. Um, so if it's not there right away, come back to the video, and then you can go check out this, uh, guy's channel. He's, he's really good, um. And um, another um, person to go check out is the Watchman River channel. He's really good too. Um, it just it's just one of those sources that helps you keep up with what's going on. But it's backed. Everything that's going on is truly just backed up by Bible prophecy, and it's truly amazing what we see going on in the world and everything else and how you know yeah floods happen um earthquakes happen they've always happened um tornadoes and all the crazy weather has always happened but literally it's all happening at once it's not dispersed it's not okay here is a little bit here and then oh but it's it's happening all at once and you know the guy I was watching this morning he was saying that something major and something is going on in California and he said what I've been feeling you know God's dealing with California. I was born and raised in Bakersfield, California, and I am honestly glad to say I do not live in that state. I am, in a kind of way, I'm almost, I wish I was never, like, associated with California, but back in the day, when I was younger, California actually used to be a an okay state you know it was like it was really it was actually a really cool place to be and you know just I, I believe it was four it's got to be at least four or five years now um I went back to California and I said good you know I said goodbye to my grandpa and even then, it just felt like it was getting more wicked. Um, and so there's just, God's just dealing with a lot. I feel like he, God is sending messages to, sending a message to California, but not only to California, he's sending messages to the Northeast, um, you know, overseas. He's sending messages all over the United States, all over the world, and crazy things are happening. But I feel like he's sending a message for people to to repent, to fall on their face and repent and turn from their wicked ways and give their life to the Lord and love and serve him. But not only that... He's also sending a message that, well, it's, it's a basically, it's like a precursor to what is going to happen in these seven years of tribulation. And we see these things going on and it is amazing how the Lord speaks to us through every day life. And how he can use something that the world would see as tragic. But yet he can show you something that is 
prophecy and that will yet to be fulfilled and he will give you a glimpse a glimpse of what is going on not because you're going to witness it in the future and I'll, I'll get into more on that here in a little bit um but so that you can warn people about what is going on and what is going to happen in the future and what could possibly be their future if they keep rejecting the Lord. So, now that, since I'm on that subject, um, I want to go back, I believe it was It was, a, it was spring. I believe it was 2021. So it wasn't that long ago when they decided to go ahead and reopen the parks. And uh, me and me and my husband, my sister, her husband, and their kids. And they brought a friend. Uh, my husband. Or my uh, sister's son brought a friend, so we were all at Six Flags, just having a good, fun day. And um, it was it was literally at the end of the day. Um, we had to split up. Some people were waiting in line so we could get you know fulfill our food vouchers and you know all that you know all that stuff and. Um, my nephew wanted to ride some more rides, so I was like, I'll take him, I'll, we'll go on these rides, and you guys go do what you're gonna do. Oh, some pretty deer this morning. Deer are pretty, huh, Lulu? Yeah. I love you too. <laughs> Sorry guys, I got sidetracked. But, um, there is, um, so... Oh, yeah. So, you know, we were all dispersed. And me and my nephew had just gotten off our last ride for the night. And we were going to go meet up with his mom, which is my sister. And, you know, kind of all gather so that we could get in the car and go home for the night. You know, kind of wind down, settle down, go home, get ready for the long drive home. Well, as I was walking towards, you know, the front of the park where my sister was, I seen this river of people. And I, I, I went through this when it did happen. Um, I seen this river of people. And all you see, it was like a bunch of like heads just bopping up and down like this. It was literally just like a river of people. And I'm sitting here going, oh, okay, well, I don't know what's going on. Maybe there's, like, I don't know, something I didn't know about. And I was just like, oh, hey, come on, let's get out of the way. And I'm like, I'm like I need to ask what is going on. And so I was like, hey, what's going on? And they're like, shooter, shooter, run. So um, me and my nephew, we start taking off and... We get to the actual, like, end of the park where Batman is. And, uh, we start driving. Or, not driving. Oh my gosh. We, you know, we get to a safe spot. And we call my husband. And we're trying to call my sister. And, you know, we're trying to make sure that everybody's okay. But, uh, you know, as I'm standing there on the phone, there's another river of people just coming out of Batman and joke the new joker ride that they had there um just a river of people coming out saying shooter 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 and you know it was just chaotic and the lord kind of like i remember i still remember it. it was almost like the lord had put me into slow motion for a little bit and i it's almost like i got to see what was truly going on around me which was a little crazy at the time like seriously it was it was crazy to see what was going on and um as I was kind of like in the slow mo I, I still I still remember almost crystal clear 
these little kids, because I remember I had, we had several kids coming up to us, up to, up to me and my nephew asking, where's my mommy? Do you, do you know where my mommy is? I'm like, um, no, but if you stay next to me, we'll try and find your mom and we'll figure that out. And they would find their mom and run off to their mom because they didn't need to be protected anymore. Um, and there were moms and, and, uh, dads that were yelling out their kid's name. I mean, basically just screaming at the top of their lungs for their children and moms were, I seen this one mom, I remember her face. She was just in a complete panic and there were tears rolling down her eyes. Like I remember this and I just felt like the Lord was speaking to me saying, do you want to know what it's going to be like when the rapture happens? Here you go. This is what it's going to be like. People are going to lose their minds. They're going to be in a state of panic and shock. They're going to not know what to do. Children are going to lose their parents. And it's it's literally just amazing. How much one little event can give you a glimpse of how, as soon as the rapture happened, how people are going to flick this panic switch and how quickly they're going to go into a panic. It's going to be almost uncontrollable for them. And it just, it literally just makes you think like, wow, 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 wow. And the Lord just, the Lord literally speaks to us in ways that we can truly not understand. And honestly, I don't think a lot of people truly do want to understand how the Lord speaks and works and shows you things and how much it just, it just truly is amazing. And a lot of people don't even want to recognize that Jesus and God, you know, they're one and the same. They have our best interest at heart. And the Lord is always going to be there to protect us. How, how amazing, how crazy is it that you know it's it, it truly is just amazing and um my dog wants to talk so if she talks I'm sorry she's a nutcase but I love my little nutcase I do I love her so much but anyways um anyways um this, there's something that I don't get very often anymore, but when 2020 hit, I started seeing, I think it was right before 2020, um, I started seeing these things when I would start driving around, and it was like, I, for like a split second, it's like Jesus would show me how things are right now, in a certain area and then turn left on and then I would just look and basically like blink my eye and mm, the semi they're scary take the next left on the state highway okay give me one second y'all Continue on State Highway 3. Okay. So, I would get this glimpse of what the world would look like in the tribulation. And it's kind of like night and day. Because you have this beautiful...
beautiful scenery that the Lord is just allowing me to see. And then all of a sudden, in like, it's like the, by the time you blink your eye and then you look again and you see it just burnt up and you just see the trees aren't there there's ash everywhere the grass is on fire it's dead it's gone it's it's almost like you could see people struggling and you know the bible truly says like the days the second half of the tribulation has to be shortened because who can survive it and from what the Lord has shown me over the years, who could truly survive any of that? It's going to be horrible. It's going to be heartbreaking. You're not going to have rest. There will be no peace. Even though um, Antichrist will come to power. He will promise peace and make these peace treaties and rebuild the third temple. He will do all of these things and from what I can understand, there will be peace for a time but the peace will be very short lived and the peace will actually never truly be there. And uh, people are going to honestly wake up. Because right now people are asleep. They're oblivious. People, A lot of people don't even realize what all is truly going on in the world. And it's like birth pains. You almost don't even want to look at it because it, it can give you anxiety if you don't trust in the Lord. And even when you trust in the Lord and you know where you're going... Seeing these things can give you anxiety because you know your loved ones who keep rejecting Jesus are going to be here to live through it. To live through that horrible seven years. I, I don't see how it, I don't see how you can do it. I don't see why you would want to choose to live for for this world instead of for the love of the Lord who went to the cross on Calvary to die and save you from the hour of his wrath. But we can't we can seriously we can't just sit here and dwell on the people who are going to be left behind. We have to literally we have to set the we have to set the stage. Because a lot of people say, well God's not gonna be part of the tribulation. There's not gonna be, you know, no one's gonna be saved. No one's gonna there's not gonna be a revival, you know but the Bible contradicts all of that. The Bible even contradicts, like, the, the people said there's not going to be a pre-tribulation rapture. And it's going to be mid-trip. Well, if it was mid-trip, we would know exactly, you know. And I feel like the devil would have came to power a long time ago if it was mid-trip. No, we're, we're getting raptured before the seven years begin. We're seeing the stage being set. The stage is set. Time is short. Literally, the rapture could happen like right now. That's how soon it is. The Lord is just really saying that we need to be on our toes because it's not soon. It's what moment, what second is he coming? Are you ready? Are you ready?
because the time of the season for the rapture is it's here it's here it's not coming it's here it's just a matter of God's perfect timing I'm, I'm ready to go and be in heaven I'm, I'm not long for this world Jesus went to the cross at Calvary he died for me so that I could have my sins forgiven and that I could have a personal relationship with him I belong to the king I belong to Jesus I don't belong to this world. I'm not long for it. I'm here because the Lord needs me to be here in this time. I'm here because the Lord needs me to tell people about Him. I'm here because Jesus needs me to leave the Bibles behind. To leave His legacy behind so that people can come to Him and be saved in the seven years. I'm here to warn people about the rapture so that people won't think it's aliens. I'm here to do the work of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why I'm here. I'm not here to to be like the, or live like the world. I'm here for one purpose to serve my Lord and Savior. I'm here to be a warning bell. I'm here to sound the alarm. I'm here to to do my to do my father's will. And you know what? I ask Jesus all the time for certain things to be done. But I've learned that it doesn't matter how much I ask him. If it's not in his will, he will not do it. He has a plan and a purpose for everything. If you're going through something, if you're going through trials and tribulations, if you're going through sickness or whatever, there's a plan and a purpose for it. And uh, there's a pastor that I've been watching. And he's been going through the book of Job. And, you know, Job went through some horrible things. And, you know, he could have lashed out. But, and he, he came to a point where he didn't understand if, or he didn't understand why God was letting him go through these things. But I believe he knows now because he's in heaven. Because the book of Job was written so that we could read it today and be like, oh, he's going through some of the same things I went through. And if he can get through it, I can get through it and I need to lean on Jesus and it just really shows you that you need to you need to be connected to Jesus you need to talk to him you need to have a great relationship with him God always has a plan and a purpose for everything and you know, God always gives us a way out but we, sometimes we have to go through the storm to get out of it. And that's why everything that's going on with my stomach right now, I'm able to get through it because Jesus has a plan and a purpose for me. There's a reason I'm going through this season and why I'm going through these things. That's okay. Everything is done for God's kingdom and his glory. And I ask Jesus every day, use me for your kingdom and your glory. 
and um, there was a, I believe it was yesterday, maybe it might have been a couple videos back, um, where the Watchmen River Channel, the guy was talking about um, how some people are loving their worldly possessions and how he doesn't care about his worldly possessions. The world can have them. But, you know what? Do you know? I give my worldly possessions to Jesus every day. There's a fish in there, I think. Sorry, guys. I got distracted. <laughs> um, anyways, there's um, our worldly possessions. Give them to God. Say, Jesus, I lay all of my worldly possessions at your feet. Please use them for your kingdom, your honor, your glory. And Lord, I ask that you will use them in some way, shape, or form to bring people to you. We got to give it all to Jesus. Say, Lord, I am willing to leave it all behind. But Lord, I want to lay it at your feet and your hands. And I want it to be used for your kingdom, your glory, your honor, your praise. And I want it to be used to bring people to you. You, But above all, Lord Jesus, I ask that your will be done with my earthly possessions. I ask that your will be done in my life. And when it comes to the people that you're going to leave behind, the Lord has just really put it on my heart to say, Jesus, I love these people. I know that they're probably, if they reject you, if they are not raptured and they are left behind, Lord, I ask that you will put it on their hearts so strongly. Give them a pull towards you like no other. And may they not be satisfied until they give their life to you. Lord, use them for your kingdom and your glory. Lord, I ask that they will have the greatest strength to resist the mark of the beast. And that they will be willing to die for you, Jesus. Guys, we need to be praying and we need to be telling the Lord and we need to be giving things over to Jesus. Time is so, so short. So short. Why? Why? I love you. I love you. I know you want to talk. Guys, I'll show you my dog. Say good morning, crazy. Say good morning. Yeah, that's my Lulu girl. That's my Lulu girl. She's so precious.
Jesus a big hug. And I want to say thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done. I have been blessed with more than I ever deserve. I really have. Like, I tell him that. But I want to give him a hug and tell him that to his face. I really do. He's my best friend. He is my savior, my redeemer. He is, he's my everything. He really is my everything. I would truly be nothing without Jesus. I am so glad that he died, he rose again to save me. And not only did he do these things for me, but he did them for you too. He's lo he loves you and he's waiting on you. Say, come Lord Jesus, come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alright guys, well I'm going to get off here and I will see you in my next video or you know what, I'm kind of hoping I don't have to make another video because I am so ready for the rapture to happen. Like I really wish the rapture would happen today because today is an awesome, truly beautiful day to be raptured. But if not, why I'm here, I just ask that Jesus will use me for his kingdom and his glory. Alright, bye y'all.